Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis is out of jail this afternoon. We're live with details of her release in a rally held in her honor afterward. A family friend told us that the fifth grader who was struggling to survive after a crash in Jessamine County this weekend has died. UK coach John Calipari is getting ready to be inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame. He's talking about the honor. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon to you. A county clerk jailed over her refusal to issue marriage licenses has been freed. Officer Don Evans from Sky First shot this video of the crowd around the Carter County Jail as Kim Davis walked out of jail this afternoon. And while Judge David Bunning ordered her release, it does come with some conditions. Our Victor Puente begins our breaking news team coverage live in Carter County. Victor? Kim Davis spent six days here at the Carter County Detention Center after a federal judge found her in civil contempt. She was released earlier today, but her attorneys insist she still won't put her name on same-sex marriage licenses. Davis was remanded to the custody of U.S. Marshals last Thursday after she told Judge David Bunning she couldn't give her deputy clerks the authority to license those marriages. Today, a rally outside of the jail drew hundreds to the city of Grayson, including some Republican presidential candidates. Judge Bunning filed an order earlier today releasing Davis. He said because five of her clerks were issuing marriage licenses, the office was doing its job. He also said she should not interfere with those clerks. Once she was released, Davis's attorney spoke for her. She loves God, she loves people, she loves her work, and she will not betray any of those three. She'll do her job good, she'll serve the people as they want her to serve, and she was elected. And she'll also be loyal to God, and she's not going to violate her conscience. Judge Bunning's order from earlier today also required status reports on her deputy clerks every 14 days to make sure they were still issuing those licenses. Live in Carter County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Now, hundreds were there to show their support from Kim Davis, as you saw that earlier shot from the air, as she walked out of jail. She addressed the crowd at the end of a rally in her honor, which included, again, you saw there her lawyers and Republican presidential candidate Mike Huckabee. WKYT's Garrett Weimer continues our breaking news team coverage with more on the rally. Garrett? This was billed all along as Governor Mike Huckabee's rally in support of Kim Davis, but after she was released, she herself became the guest of honor, taking the stage to rousing cheers and the song Eye of the Tiger. Thousands of people poured in here at the Carter County Detention Center and packed the place for this rally. There was praying and preaching, encouraging and instructing the folks here. Then Kim Davis took the stage to thank everyone for their prayers and support. I just want to give God the glory. He is, his people have rallied, and you are a strong people. We serve a living God who knows exactly where each and every one of us is at. People came from all over the country to be here today, and as you can probably tell, very hot out here today. Groups were passing out free water to people, but still I did see several people who had to receive medical attention because of the heat. Still, they say it was, some, it was something they wanted to be out here for. In Carter County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. It was a much quieter scene outside the Rowan County Clerk's Office. Business went on as usual there, even in the middle of Kim Davis's release in Carter County. Our Sean Moody continues our breaking news team coverage from Rowan County. There really wasn't much of a reaction here at the Round County Clerk's Office at all today. Certainly nothing like there's been over the past couple of weeks and nothing at all like what was happening in Carter County today. But there were a couple of people out here on both sides. It appeared to be business as usual inside the clerk's office. There was no crowd inside. There were no big lines, and people were coming in and out to do their business. None of the workers inside wanted to talk on camera, but one of them told me they were happy to hear that Davis was being released. They said they'd gotten phone calls from across the country expressing support. There were a couple of people on both sides of the issue who stopped by. Anita Stamper said she was thrilled to hear that Davis was being released. So I believe that they do have the right to do what they, what they would like to do. I also believe that Christians should have their rights. I don't think that, I think it is a freedom that we can't uh, judge what somebody else should be doing against what we do. Samantha Lewis has been out here for the past couple of weeks supporting same-sex marriage advocates. She said she's really not sure where things will go from here. 
I feel like it's just going to repeat like a merry-go-round. It's just going to keep going on and on and on. And at this point, we haven't heard whether or not Davis will be back here in the office tomorrow morning. In Rowan County, Sean Moody, WKYT. And you can continue tracking this story online. Just visit WKYT.com for the latest headlines and video of today's developments. A family is now mourning the loss of two children in a weekend crash. The Fayette County Coroner's Office says 10 year old Michael Oslin died today, two days after the crash on Nicholasville Road in Jessamine County. His five year old sister, his mother's fiance, and the driver who hit their pickup were also killed. The children attended Julius Marks Elementary in Lexington. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy shows us how they were remembered today. District leaders met with teachers here at Julius Marks this morning. They're helping the teachers prepare their students for what the principal is calling a very difficult, very different day. We are dealing with it very respectfully and very kindly and very gently. The loss of two students this Labor Day weekend has shaken Principal Lynn Poe and her close knit group at Julius Marks Elementary. First grader Lauren Oslin and fifth grader Michael Oslin were two of the four killed Sunday on US 27 in Nicholasville. Both drivers of the cars that hit head on, Rusty Johnson and Robbie Chaffins, died. Johnson, we're told, was the fiance of Lauren and Michael's mother. Friends say she is still recovering at UK Hospital. Principal Poe is making sure children at school have the opportunity to grieve and remember their friends. The word death and dying uh, are, are not words that um, are frequent in their vocabularies. And we want to help them as much as we can and support their emotions uh, of what they're feeling and why they're feeling that. Police in Nicholasville say the cause of the crash is still under investigation. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Managers where Rusty Johnson worked for many years are in the process of planning an event to help his family with funeral expenses. A man is dead after crashing an ATV into a guardrail. Our county by county coverage begins in Floyd County. That crash happened on US 23 yesterday. State police say the victim is 52 year old Justin Trimble. Police tell us he did not have a helmet on. And in Greenup County, two people have been arrested in connection to a teenager's death. 19 year old James Ratliff is charged with manslaughter and evidence tampering in the death of 19 year old Maddie Conley. Officers found her lying in the road on Kentucky 784 about midnight. Police have not said much about her death, only that it involves some type of ATV accident. A 17 year old was also arrested in the case. Our warm and humid weather is on the way out. Showers and storms will bring up a blast of fall for the rest of the week. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking those changes for us. Yeah, we've been awfully steamy now for the uh, first several days of September. One of the hotter starts to September that you will ever find across the bluegrass day. We're still on the toasty side this afternoon, upper 80s to around 90 degrees, but you got to remember now, we're going to balance things out. Everything has to balance out. That means those thermometers have got to go the other way, and boy, they're going to do just that heading into the weekend. Also watching our skies, starting to see some clouds billowing up across the Lexington area now, and the possibility for a little isolated shower or thunderstorm over the next couple of hours, starting to see a couple of raindrops in the southern Kentucky just a little hint of some green showing up on Defender across the Bluegrass region. You actually see some of those clouds that are beginning to develop out there. Look to our west. That is front number one that is across parts of the Mississippi River Valley. It has a uh, much cooler temperatures coming in behind it relative to what is going on out ahead of it. But the real deal chill is across parts of southern Canada into the northern plains. All of that heading toward the Bluegrass state over the next couple of days. So we're going to thunder into a fall blast. That's right, we're tracking beneficial rounds of showers and storms over the next several days. And guys, when I come back in a few minutes, we're going to show you some numbers in that seven-day forecast we haven't talked about since back in the spring. That's in just a few. UK basketball coach John Calipari is getting ready to accept another honor. And today, Coach Cal talked about his induction in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Rob Bromley's here with more on what the coach had to say. Rob? Well, that's right. The Naismith Hall of Fame up in Springfield, Massachusetts. That's where Cal is headed at the end of the week. He will be inducted Friday. Early this afternoon, Cal talked about his journey, taking him from Memphis, from Massachusetts to Memphis, then to Kentucky. He said coming to Kentucky changed everything for him. I'll tell you, I've been blessed my whole career. I mean, I had opportunities to leave 
um, Memphis to go to other jobs that maybe if I had taken, this would have never been an opportunity for me. Um, so, you know, I've been kind of, you know, I bumped into fate once or twice, chased it pretty hard, but I bumped into it. And, um, you know, like I said, I've been blessed. And Calipari going into the Hall of Fame with 10 others, including UK great Louis Dampier, who went on to star in the ABA. Rob, thank you. And Coach Cal's presenters Friday will be, listen to this lineup, Pat Riley, Larry Brown, and Julius Irving, and Louis Dampier will be presented by Dan Issel. With the latest news on WKYT.com, join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Democrats have secured enough votes to keep Republicans from rejecting the Iran nuclear deal. Three undecided Democrats announced their support after returning from summer recess. At least four Democrats have said they will join Republicans in opposing that deal. The State Department says the U.S. may soon take in more refugees from the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Hundreds of thousands have been fleeing to Europe trying to escape the civil war in Syria or parts of Iraq under militant control. Germany plans to take in 800,000. Their safety, though, is a concern. There have been more than 200 attacks on asylum seekers in Germany this year. The city of Baltimore has reached a wrongful death settlement with the family of Freddie Gray. Gray died in April, a week after suffering a spinal injury while in custody of Baltimore police. The settlement is worth $6.4 million. Six police officers face criminal charges in Gray's death. The Minnesota dentist who killed Cecil the Lion returned to his office this morning. Walter Palmer temporarily closed his practice because of the international outcry over the lion's death. A handful of protests, along with some supporters, were there. Police have placed security cameras outside the office. It will stay there as long as it's needed. Pope Francis has changed the rules for Catholics who want to end a marriage. Catholics must get an annulment if they want to remarry in the Catholic Church. As part of the new process, local bishops will review annulment applications if neither spouse is contesting the end of the marriage. It's a process where the church can offer understanding and listen to people's stories because no two stories are the same. Annulments are granted if the marriage is ruled invalid. Reasons include if a couple never intended their marriage to last or if one of the spouses did not want children. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Here in Kentucky and across the nation, heroin use has soared. A new government report shows many users begin with prescription painkillers before moving on to harder drugs. As Kenneth Craig shows us, the drugs have taken hold in many places you would never expect. Lindsay Beardsley says she had a charmed life growing up on Cape Cod, but after knee surgery at 13, she took her first prescription pain pills. Percocet soon led to heroin. I can remember in the eighth grade the first time I sniffed a Perc 30 off a toilet seat in the eighth grade with a friend of mine, and I picked up the needle on heroin when I was 15. Lindsay has been in recovery for seven months. We met her at the Gosnell Treatment Center in Falmouth, Massachusetts, part of a group of recovering addicts and their parents. You use the word shocked. Shocked, completely shocked, yes. This was not going to happen to my family. I had the perfect, what I thought, perfect white picket fence with the beautiful daughter who had two ponies. Even here, among the quaint streets and beaches of the Cape, Gosnold CEO Raymond Tomasi says athletes, students, and professionals are part of the new face of addiction. And it's a segment of the population that up to this point has pretty much said this, this is not something that we have to worry about. Over the past decade, heroin use has more than doubled in the 18 to 25 age bracket. Use among women is up 100 percent and among whites up 114 percent. What has heroin done to your life? It brought me to my knees very quickly. Jeremy Wurzberg dropped out of college as his drug use escalated. And in the end, um, I was just shooting heroin in a basement alone. Nobody wanted anything to do with me. I was just like totally and utterly alone. 
The group here says their stories are proof. The old social and economic stereotypes no longer hold. Addiction can strike in any home. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Falmouth, Massachusetts. Snoring can put children at risk for poor performance in school. Researchers looked at the grades of children with sleep disordered breathing. They found their scores were 12% lower than scores of children without sleep problems. More research is needed to understand which children are most at risk and the best ways to help them. There is still three months to go until Christmas, but now is a good time to plan for your holiday spending. Experts say you should start by making a list, figuring out what you can afford, and setting a budget. Trimming extra expenses such as getting coffee or weekend evenings out can help you boost cash for the holidays. You can also try to adopt new habits to help you save well past the holiday. Keep that savings plan in place throughout the year so that either as emergencies come up or other opportunities for travel, you're prepared for that. Experts say you can also use a credit card with rewards attached, then redeem the points for cash when the holidays get here. 